So um, it's my pleasure to present a solution to improve the quality and transparency of medical and health information worldwide. So um, I will present first an overview of why it's important to improve the quality of health information. Do we really need that? Do you really use uh, internet for health information? And then I will focus on the initiative developed by the Health on the Net Foundation, the own code. Um, what is also important is not only develop solution, but provide access to the results of that solution. And then I will uh, end my presentation presenting some tendencies that we can find in developing country that could be used in um, third uh, country. So, do we really use the internet for health purposes? Now the internet is a mainstream media. You have to understand that in 1995, internet was not much used. And now, 10 years, 17 years ago, 2.4 billion people are using the internet. But what are they looking for? The third most common activity on the internet is to search health online information. 72% say uh, it's a US result that they are looking for health information online. So it's really important. This activity is important. This is a picture from the New Yorker in 1993. That image is still a reality. On the internet, you don't know who provides the information. So you don't know if the information is from a physician, is trustworthy or not trustworthy. The point here is people who are using the internet is the people who are looking for health information. So they are in a stress situation because for them, they try to find a solution for their treatment, for their cure. And um, in the Pew Internet survey, we see that chronic patients do not check. They use the internet to change the treatment option, but they do not check the source or the date of the health information. So the consequences is you stop your treatment, you choose another treatment, and you don't know the consequences. Another study conducted by Microsoft shows that there is an increase of anxiety after consulting internet, and especially search engine. For example, you are looking for um, migraines, and at the end, you, the results come up with brain tumor. So you get, of course, Cyberchondria, which called cyberchondria. So for sure, search for health information is not a myth, it's a re reality. 35% of the adults are using the internet to check for a special condition. And from that, they take some decision. 41 verify the diagnosis for, for the with a physician, but 35, they do not go to see the physician. And they based the results just on what they are searching on the internet. So what you do with the quality of health information, there is a big consequences. So something which was uh, funny in 1993 and a problem in 1993 is still a reality in 2013. So the World Health Assembly uh, of the World Health Organization recognized that it is important to protect public health and to develop and motivate countries to develop the dot health in order to guide the, the citizen, the patient, toward trustworthy health information. How people search for health information online? 
In fact, they do not go directly to websites. What they do, they search within a search engine. And the most used search engine is Google. But you will tell me, yeah, but Google is a good search engine. Yes, for sure. Depends how you search. If you search, for example, natural cancer treatment, the first results give you something which is curing uh, uh, ideally your therapy and curing everything. It's someone that you don't know if he is really a physician that will help you to cure your cancer. So how do you know if you can trust that website or not? So what is the main problem of using the internet? Of course, you have too many information. For example, on the Google result, you don't have only one result. You have 10,000 results for just one query. So, of course, you don't have the skill as a patient to judge the quality of the page that you are just reading. And the second effect, the, this, the third effect, is also that you think, at least uh, some people think that what is on the internet has been checked. So they think that is a sign of quality, like seen on TV, seen on the internet. But it's not the case. The outcome of that is you have a mistrust with a physician because you are coming to the consultation with your own uh, uh, information and the physician telling, t tell you something different. And you have increase of anxiety. So what can we do for that? Many initiatives have been developed for the past decade, trying to improve the quality of health information. I will we'll just go quickly through that. So you have many initiatives which have been come up for the last 10 years. Some are specific to different countries, for example, um, the Afghis one, the Iraq one from the, uh, in here, in US, that they can, they try to evaluate websites it's an accreditation uh, program. But the problem of this initiative is to have your site accredited, you have to pay $13,000. So only a few websites get accredited. Then you have other initiatives that um, some does not exist anymore. The Web Medical Accreditata, this one, is the one created uh, in Barcelona and it's specific to the Spanish content. They have uh, around 300 Spanish websites certified uh, by the Medical Association of Barcelona. Here you have the Information Standard. It's an initiative uh, developed by UK. Currently they have around more than 130 websites certified. Most, most of them or charity, you have to pay, but not much. And H1 has developed in 1996 the uncode certification, and I will a little bit focus on that and explain what we do and how we do that. And of course, you have other initiatives or solutions that help to access to quality health information. For example, again, Google Rank. So some people try to show that the Google page rank, in fact, try to promote the quality, but it's not always true depending to the domain and to the queries that you are looking for. And you have other different uh, initiatives. The Google Co-op has been stopped by Google three years ago. Wikipedia, of course, it's a um, community intelligence. And you have some initiative like the DISCERN is more, more intended by researcher librarians. It's quite technical.
So I will talk about Health on the Net Foundation. So what, what do we do and why we have been created? In fact, we have been created in 1995 uh, as a result of a big conference um, in Geneva, Switzerland, where uh, experts from 36 countries uh, decided that it was important to try to guide the citizen toward quality health information. So, as a, um, a decision, they decide to create an organization that will try to focus on problems for health on the internet. So our main uh, issue here is we try to tackle the quantity of health information and try to help how to differentiate quality health information from untrustworthy health information. So. The foundation, as I said, has been created in 1995. In 2002, we have been recognized as a non-governmental uh, organization by the United Nations. So at the United Nations, we are discussing and trying to promote quality health information online. In 2004, we won, we have been recognized by European Union and since 2007, we are working at the governmental level with the French government. In 2010, we have been um, integrated within the ISO T uh, C 2015. It's a working group on uh, standardization. So what did we develop? In fact, we developed in 1996 a set of ethical guidelines which help webmaster but also citizen to try to identify trustworthy information to non-ethical information. So what we ask of, for a website, for example, you are in a website and in fact what we want to understand here is who is the author of the information, who has published, do he has medical background, is a patient, does it state that he is a patient or not, or she? Why the information is provided? Is it for uh, complement the patient-physician re re relationship? Is it online consultation? Privacy, we want to understand how the site will treat personal confidential information. Often on the web, you don't know how your, for example, if you give your email addresses, how they will be using it? Or if they are selling all your information to third party? Attribution, we want to understand where the content is coming from, the references. Often you have content, but the content is not original. So you want to understand the references, the date, when the information has been published, is it outdated or not? Just affability, for example, you make a claim, you say that this treatment cure that particular disease, but what is the uh, uh, side effect? What is the warming? Uh, does pregnant women can take the treatment or not? So it's important to have that information, so we verify that too. Transparency, we want to be sure that behind the site there is a responsible in order to uh, be contacted to modify the content. You have some website, you send an email, but nobody answer. And the two last principles is about the funding. The funding and the sponsorship. So the funding is who is funding the site? Is it a pharmaceutical industry? Is it clearly identified? So you want to know that. And the last, the sponsorship. You have some content which is not clearly stated that it is someone who sponsors it. But if you read the content, you see that behind there is a sponsor. And that is not transparent. So what we try to say is if there is a content which has been paid by a sponsor, that should be clearly stated because that can influence the content and how you are perceiving the information. And in fact, it's not information, 
is advertisement. So the own code, in fact, the idea of the own code is not to control the information. It's to give a tool to the citizen to try to judge the content of health information on the internet. They go on a website and they can check by themselves each the principle, if the site is transparent or not. So for example, an example of certified websites, patient.co.uk. Another website which is not certified. For example, this website is in German, but here they are referring to references, but the references is from 1983, so they are outdated. And they internationally are not saying all the truth, all the reality, so they are manipulating the information. And of course, it's tendentious. They try to sell you shark cartilage to cure cancer. So, to have quality of health information on website is possible, but only on a voluntary basis. If a site does not want to respect criteria, it's difficult to force him to do so, because there is no regulation, there is no control. Politically, nobody enforces websites to respect basic ethical principles. So how we did that? So it is based the on code on a voluntary basis. So websites decide to respect the principles they apply via their own websites. And then we evaluate each website according to the principles. We review the information. We make some recommendation to make sure the site respects all the principles. What you need to understand is most of the website does not respect principles. We did a study, only 2% out of 165 websites was respecting the principles. So without the own code, most of the website does not respect the principles. And then when a site is in compliance, we deliver the own code seal. So, and you can ask, does the site need to pay? No, it's free of charge. So how does it look like? It's here. You have a website, LabTest Online, dedicated to uh, uh, patients and citizens. I'm sorry. So they are certified. And if you click here, you have a dynamic seal where you can understand when the site has been certified and when they need to be re-evaluated. And also, if you think that the site does not respect the principles, you can submit a complaint. So we evaluate that and we make sure that the site respects the own code. So the role of the certification at a different level. First, we motivate websites. We f support the website in order to be sure that their sites respect the principles. It's a process. Each year, we evaluate the websites, and we make sure that the site is still in compliance with the principles. Of course, we rely on permanent vigilance and if a site does not respect any more of the principles, they can lose the certification. What we had also to do is, of course, the certification is not the same if you do it in France. The regulation is not the same that in UK, is not the same in Brazil, is not the same in Spain. So we take into account the context of the, uh, of the country. So the sites that ask for the certification, only 5% does respect the principles. And you have to understand that at this level, they try to make the effort. They think that all of them respect basic ethical principles. So when we do the evaluation, we try to have 
very high level standards. So for each principle, we have extract of the ju justification proving how the site respects the principles. As I say, um, the initiative is international. So the web has no barrier, has no frontier. So, and the certification is also international. So currently we have 8,000 websites in 102 countries worldwide. We speak 35 languages, so the own code is in 35 languages. Uh, in France, we have 1,800 websites, in UK, 300, in Switzerland, 300. So from test websites, we have very big ones, small ones. It is why it's free of charge, to allow all test small websites to be able to apply for the certification. Because, for example, the um, information standards, most of their websites are from charity websites. Charity website does not have money to pay because already to be of quality costs a lot because you have to, be, to, to do some modification, your production process is different. So quality has already a cost and a big cost. So recognizing that there is a different uh, a difference uh, according to different countries. For example, you cannot provide the same information or the same information is not the same in Bamako, in South Africa, in Geneva. And what we realized um, in uh, 2000, 2000, I think it was, uh, we did a survey with WHO in Bamako, Mali, and we realized that um, people was in need to, to find information, but most of the information was not very trustworthy. So what they did, they was trying to find information in different countries, in Belgium, in Switzerland, but that information is not adapted to the Bamako citizen, to the, to the Mali. So we developed representation in Mali, we developed also a representation and a collaboration in South Africa and uh, some work in Saudi Arabia. So I will introduce them. So in Bamako, Mali, we have a team and it's a formal representation there. We have a team of five people that are working, they are physicians and evaluating websites in the French speaking area. So we have developed also a search engine where it focuses only on test websites which have been selected, evaluated. For the um, English-speaking African country, the approach was a little bit different. We make a collaboration with the Medical Research Council in order to develop a long-term collaboration where they try to evaluate website according to the UNCODE certification, they developed also a promotion program as well. So how we did that? And also they did a survey. So they want to understand if, if you don't have the certification, how the, what is the behavior of the website? So here you can see that website does not respect the doctor-patient rel relationship, most of them, Privacy policy is not an issue. They don't know what is it. They don't have it. The date, no date on this website. An ad advertisement is not identified. So here we see that there is a need for ethical guidelines and there, there is a need to help editors to produce quality health information. And that is the ap approach in this country. It's not only to evaluate website, but help to produce quality information in test different country. So you can go there on the website. And in Saudi Arabia, we did quite a similar study. So a few years ago, we did a study uh, also with WHO, and we work in close collaboration with WHO. And we realized that only few websites were was available in Arabic, and only few was respecting principles, quality principles. 
And we also identify that 79% uh, health professional was not using Arabic health websites. So they was referring to other websites in US, for example. So the practice and, and information from US does not solve problem in Saudi Arabia. So we developed a website here in Arabic and in English to try to, put, to produce information but based on quality standards. And what we do also is to raise awareness among the citizens to show how to select information in Arabic but from trustworthy websites. Quality health information is fundamental in the decision because if you don't have quality information, your decision will be not appropriate and even dangerous for your health. But what is also important is to have access to test information. So we developed a toolbar where you can identify automatically, for example, using Google websites that are certified. So you can focus on test websites. We are also developing search engine in different languages where you can search and you will get only certified websites. What we do also in test search engine, we focus according to different audiences, for example, health professionals, patients, forums. We are also uh, quite successful in European projects. What we try to do is to develop technology, the future technology. So currently in this project, we are developing a search engine uh, it's a collaboration uh, with 12 partners in Europe and it's a 10 million project. We are currently in the third year, so we are developing a prototype. It's a search engine, but only based on quality health information. And we developed this search engine based on patient requirements. So we did some study in order to understand what really people are looking for. For example, we realize that for them, it's, translation is very important because most of the information is available in English, but most of the people do not speak fluently English. So they would like to have tools which help the translation, the tools that give you accurate translation because Google works well, but if you use it in, in uh, the medical fields, sometimes the translation are very funny. So here I will focus on health tendency and what will be uh, brought very soon in developing countries. So it's approaches that, uh, it's different approaches in providing health information. So for example, it's a website, the Health Tap. I don't know if you know it. It's very impressive. Behind is only physician and you can ask a question and physician will answer your question. So in a, it is another way to deliver information. And physician can vote if the answer of the physician was appropriate or not. So behind, you have a quality process where you, you have the evaluation of each answer of the physician. So it's another way to providing information. Another way to provide information and to help the patients is a health avatar. It's a 3D body nav navigation tool, but that helps you, for example, something, you, you have a pain in your head, so you click there, and the system will help you with some elements, some information, diagnosis, etc. So you don't have necessarily to know the medical terms. On the internet, we had a very big, big uh, shift on the way that in 17 years, how the information has been uh, delivered to patients. Before, you had doctor who has all the knowledge. Now is the 
patients who have also the knowledge. It's a different knowledge, but it's an important knowledge. And f from the past uh, year, this knowledge has been identified as fundamental in helping other patients with a disease. So patients like me, it's one of the first websites in Web2 website where the community developed some knowledge more than what the physician could have done. So it's helped to share, compare the experience between patients and also support other patients. Currently, I'm talking about the web, but the web is already passed. Most of you have a smartphone. Most of you f search on the internet with a smartphone. And here we see that seven in 10 years, so 70% use health indicators via their smartphone. So it will be the next regeneration how to provide information. So, and that is US information, but in developing countries, in all countries, it's maybe not so high, but it's quite very high. And what is often uh, occurring, for example, in Bamako, of course, they don't have all smartphones, but they do have a, a phone. And a phone is the first thing that they have. So transmitting information via, via a phone it will be very important in those countries. So you have different applications. Uh, if you search, for example, on Google Play or on iTunes, you have thousands and thousands of medical health applications. However, how do you know you can trust them? You don't know. Because Apple verify, but they just verify basically the good source, not much more. And the issue is also there is a very big expectation and also a very big resistance from the physician. They are afraid about mobile applications. But for example, here we see that patients really feel that information will be de delivered by the phone. And they will be able also to manage the chronic disease, for example, and to follow all their diseases. This is an application which is very funny. You can check your cardiac monitoring with a device and your iPhone. And that can save, can save your life. Because it will detect, give the information to the physician. And for example, if you are doing your jog and you have an heart attack, it will be detected just much before and you can have an intervention of, uh, of the physician. And what happened that in US, the FDA tried for the past year to evaluate and accredit devices, applications, because for them, this application is like a medical device. And more and more, we will have such uh, devices, application being recognized uh, as a medical device. Serious gaming, gamification. Um, we realize that access to the information, basic page, is not very um, sexy, let's say. So kids, even pay, uh, parents, when you are in a tr stress because you, you are sick, you don't have to have very difficult uh, information to read. What you want is to play, but in the same time, try to learn something. So. More and more you have test games that uh, have been developed. It's not so much, but it's coming slightly, surely, where you have a games which help, for example, kids, parents, patients to understand more their disease and to be not afraid about the therapy, for example, or laboratory tests or uh, chemotherapy. So that is a, a French uh, game which have been accredited by H1. So the internet has changed a lot. 
the situation between and the relationship between patient and health professionals. Of course, he has helped a lot the consumer, the patient, because they empower. They, now they have the information. They, they can make their own decision. They are involved, which is very important, and helps them to cure more quickly. In the other hand, that also has brought some mistrust among the physician. Of course, it's challenging for, for the physician. But also it's helped to try to develop the other approaches like telemedicine, uh, diagnostic online. For the physician, it helps also to have continuing med medical training. So it's helped a lot. In conclusion, H1 has been active for the past 17 years, and we have been developing initiatives in the domain of health online information. We educate citizens to judge and to make their own choice among health information online and to identify trustworthy of non-trustworthy information and to try to educate them and to make them understand that quality is a problem. We did some interview among patients. In fact, for them, when you ask, does quality is important, they will say, yes, of course it's very important. But when you say, okay, go on the internet and tell me which website you would select, you realize that there is a totally disconnection between what they feel and what really they do, because they don't really understand the implication behind. So we try to uh, teach them that, to show them that this is important. We develop some automatic tools to detect, for example, automatically the quality of health information that is research development. And we collaborate with WHO very closely. It's based in Geneva, that's help. And for the past years, it has been shown that the adherence enhance the quality of health websites online. And we hope that the next uh, decade we will continue our work and develop services on the web, but also on mobile application, because it's the next challenge. So here are some references in the literature uh, showing that we can be used in patient records also and we help on the quality of health information. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Celia. Is there uh, any questions from the audience? Thank you, guys. Thank you, Celia. Thank you.